Hello everyone, I'm Kelly Covert and this is At Home with Symphoria. And today we have here with us our Symphoria Youth Orchestra Manager, Lana Stafford. Lana, welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm so glad to, to sit down with you. And, um, you know, I know Lana on many levels. And one of those is as a flutist, Lana is a flutist. And I think that our youth orchestra peeps, uh, our members are so um, lucky to have someone managing the youth orchestra that really knows what it's like to be a musician and also to be a member of the youth, youth orchestra because you were a member of the youth orchestra long ago, right? That's right. Yeah. So um, why don't you tell us what you do as Symphoria Youth Orchestra Manager? Oh, thank you. So I, when we have rehearsals every week, I'm really there for the, the week to week, um, setting up the rehearsal, getting the building open and I handle the music, handing out parts and all of these little things that you might not think of that have to go on behind the scenes mm -hmm. in order to make the youth orchestras kind of happen. Mm -hmm. And how many youth orchestras do we have? So there are three youth orchestras, and we have students from fifth grade through senior year in high school, as well as a few college students. So we have one string orchestra for middle school, um, the Symphoria Youth String Orchestra, and then two full orchestras, which is really exciting. Um, when I was in youth orchestra, it was just one string and one full orchestra. So this is a chance for even more students to participate and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's a real testament to the musical talent that we have in CNY, right? That we have um, enough um, really great players to fill out three orchestras like that. Absolutely. Well, and you know, the kids come from not just central New York, right? Can you talk about the range of area that um, our youth orchestra members are from? Yes, yeah, so we have students from, this is kind of a big list, but as far away as Utica and Watertown, uh, Fulton, Oswego, um, pretty much every direction from mm -hmm. Cayuga County and all over Onondaga County and Oneida. And it's pretty amazing because, you know, something like an all county or area all state festival is one really intense and fun weekend. But Youth Orchestra brings together kids from so many different schools every week throughout the school year. Mm -hmm. And it's been, of course, um, we have not been able to have Youth Orchestra rehearsals and concerts um, since COVID began. So what have you been doing to help all of our members feel connected and feel like they're still a part of the Symphoria family? So every Sunday, our rehearsals are normally on Sundays. So we have been having online interviews with our youth orchestra conductors and Symphoria musicians on Facebook and Instagram and Zoom. And this weekend, we just had a senior celebration on Zoom where it was really great. And Symphoria musicians um, actually offered advice to seniors, whether they were going into music in college or thinking about taking lessons and just giving a lot of practical advice and answering questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that it really makes a difference um, for these kids, especially when they feel so just like isolated in their homes. I know as adult professional musicians, we've been feeling that way too. And I think for kids who are used to having band and orchestra at school every day, and then having this special Sunday um, orchestra rehearsal and really connecting with people on that level, that it's been a challenge. Yeah, I definitely think so. And I think we're all looking forward to, you know, reopening. Mm, yeah, for sure. Well, and so in that regard, um, how are the Symphoria Youth Orchestra auditions working this year? Because usually those are in-person auditions, right? Yes. And this year we are having auditions on video. And we are collecting all of our audition registrations online. And you can find that on the Symphoria website under the Educate tab. There's a Symphoria Youth Orchestra section. 
And there you can register and submit your audition videos um, with a scale and one or two pieces. All of the requirements are there. And then once everyone is registered, then we'll be deciding, you know, as soon as it's possible to make these decisions, um, what configuration we'll be in next mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and fingers crossed that we can have um, rehearsals and concerts, um, at least in some form, for all of these amazingly talented students. So we have um, uh, quite a few people watching, and one of one of them is um, our favorite percussionist, Ernie Muskies. And um, he says, the young musicians are lucky to have Lana Stafford as their youth orchestra manager. She rocks, um, which is true. And I wonder, can, do you have any special memories from when you were part of the Syracuse Symphony Youth Orchestra? I just remember, thank you, Ernie, by the way. I just remember playing pieces like Scheherazade and the Mendelssohn Reformation Symphony and pictures at an exhibition and just sitting, you know, I was playing flute the second flute and piccolo and just like the the power of being in the middle of the orchestra was really fun and playing at the civic center and you know the side by sides the mm -hmm. coachings with with the symphony musicians everything was just fantastic mm -hmm. and i'm so happy that we offer so many of those same things to our students they play side by sides and we play at the civic center every year and they get the the personal contact with the symphony musicians too. Mm -hmm. And and uh, from the perspective of, of the adult musicians, the professional musicians, me included, we love the side-by-side. -side. It's so fun. Like it's so fun to get to sit inside of a section um, with these students and they've been working on this repertoire for, you know, weeks and weeks and they show up and it always exceeds my expectations. I, I, you would think as many times as I've done it, I would be, I would know what it would feel like. It's always better than I think it's going to be. And I see that, um, you know, as manager, I get to stay backstage in the wings and watch the concerts and I'm at every rehearsal. So I hear how much better the orchestras get over time. And the concert day is always just a little bit extra and a little extra special. Mm -hmm. And the side-by-sides are for both the young artist orchestra and the repertory orchestra. So we actually have two side-by-sides every year. Mm -hmm. We love them so much. I love them so much. Well, so you, um, you're you also a flutist. What are you doing in, in sort of your flute world these days? So in my flute world, actually it was just teaching. So I have my flute on my desk with me. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm playing some Bach, you know, cello transcriptions, and I'm teaching a, a flute class and just kind of regrouping and thinking about what I might want to do next year. I kind of mm -hmm. do a lot of recitals and work with a pianist in 2019 and thinking about some chamber music. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And we have uh, we have some SYO parents here watching today. Lisa Roswick is here and she is listening while she works. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Um, her her daughter, Natalie, right, plays violin with the orchestra. So thanks. Thanks to all of you who are here today. And if you have any questions for Lana, now's your chance to ask them. Just put them in the comments and I'll make sure that um, that we ask her. So if you could be. And I think this is such an interesting question for you because I feel like you're someone who does many things already, but if you could be something besides a flutist, besides a professional musician, what would you be? A horseback rider. Oh man, you are ready. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more about this. I know you really well and I don't think I know this about you. <laughs> um, so when I started playing the flute in fourth grade, I also, my mom, finally gave in and, and got me horseback riding lessons also. And I it thought- It was a big year. Fourth grade was a big year, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and all the way through like middle school, I was just obsessed with horses and rode all through college actually. And I just feel like you can have such a special connection with horses and it's um, fascinating. The training, I ride English style dressage. Mm -hmm sort of like gymnastics for the horses. And I, I just feel like there's a lot of crossover between the disciplines. So, yeah. <laughs> like what? What's some of that crossover? Well, 
I mean, I feel like when you're a musician, you want to be able to have a good sound and be able to play anything, any different character. And on a horse, you want to have a good channel of communication so you could go in any direction at any speed at any time. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like taking all of the tiny fundamental pieces and layering them up to make this one beautiful performance. Yes, a lot of like independent factors, just like with your posture and playing music. And mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can attest, um, for those of you who haven't heard Lana play, she's an excellent flutist, and I always um, love to hear her play. And in fact, you did a wonderful recital last year that I went to and it was, I'm st I still think about it. It was so good. I loved it. <laughs> I still think about when I first came back to Syracuse about five years ago and I got to take lessons with you and you prepared mm -hmm. me for my first recital here. Mm -hmm. the, the, was that the one with Gobert, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. We'll have to put a link to the Gobert uh, flute sonata. It was the first, was it the first sonata mm -hmm. in, in the, um, comments because it's just beautiful and Lana did a great job on it. So um, you are at home with all of your plants and I know you have a cat too. Um, what is one of your favorite guilty pleasures right now? Um, so without a doubt, it's mango and acai, like the frozen section at Wegmans. I know that I should just stick to like more economic choices for my smoothies, but <laughs> it's like... <laughs> So you make a smoothie out of it? Yeah, like fam Wegmans family packs of organic mango. It's uh -huh. like that should not be for one person. It's like a lot of mango, but yeah, no, I'm familiar with those. So what's what's your secret recipe? Can you share? Like water, spinach, mango, lemon, banana. Mm -hmm. I, that doesn't feel like very guilty to me. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I always feel guilty when I pick up my like two packs of mangoes. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody knows I live by myself. I will take as much mango as I want. Um, I'm going to have to try that combo. I love smoothies. So what are you listening to right now? Ooh, I'm like a very silent. I surround myself in a lot of silence, but I've been listening to a um, Indian Carnatic fusion crossover musician <laughs> named Aditya. Prakash, who I found through Anushka Shankar. I think he's really cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's really random. Well, also let's, why not? I, I'm not sure if you're on Facebook, but if you're not, you can send me a link and I'll put, I'll put a link on YouTube or something to that too. Cause I think people are always really interested in what we're listening to. And I knew that you wouldn't disappoint us with something unique. <laughs> I agree with you though. I um, surround myself with a lot of silence also. I like listening to the birds, like being outside and mm -hmm. I don't even bring my phone when I go walking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best. So um, what are you most looking forward to when the youth orchestra can be together again? Just, you know, the, the opportunity to have all of the students come together and play music and do something new together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure that they're really looking forward to that too. And this so. Everybody. I know. Well, I, and I feel like I'm looking at you now, but I just, I haven't seen your face in like in person in months and yeah. it's just weird. It's weird. Right. <laughs> so, um, are you ready for your lightning round questions? Let's do it. I feel like these are kind of challenging. These were provided by Eduardo Sepulveda, our principal oboist who um, is also friends with Lana. And I don't think he knew that they were for you though. So, um, <laughs> uh, Ernie says, says that I, I think that nothing is a guilty pleasure, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think there's guilty pleasures. People just need to find them. Um, okay. So summer at the beach or winter by the fireplace. Summer at the beach. Mm -hmm. What would be the coolest animal to scale up to the size of a horse? <laughs> Speaking um, of horses, <laughs> like, oh, that's, I don't know. Because you don't want a small predator. I thought at first like a bluebird, but then I thought like how giant its beak would be. Yeah. Maybe Even, like, I think like a puppy would be my pick. 
They're so floppy. They couldn't hurt anybody. Yeah, let's go with puppy. I totally answered that for you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I aim to please. Okay, this one is so challenging. It's impossibly difficult. One stays, the other is erased from history. Bach or Mozart? I think that Bach stays. Do you want to tell us why? I just think that there's like mysticism in his harmonies and that, you know, there are other people who did things like Mozart did that were in the classical style. I mean, it would be really sad if Mozart's, you know, improvisation never existed, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have a book on Bach and I don't have a book on Mozart. Okay, so well, we'll go. go with Bach. I was really thinking about that, and I would just decline to answer that. I think <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think I could do it. Um, okay, what kind of secret society would you like to start? Um, one that like I don't know talked about interdisciplinary connections between like art and music and horses. It wouldn't have to be secret. That's so strange. Eduardo, you're very imaginative. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that he gets the prize for the most interesting uh, lightning round question so far. Okay, and, the, and last one, equally difficult. What fictional character is amazing in their show or movie, but would be insufferable if you had to deal with them in everyday situations? Oh my gosh. I mean, Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Although I know people like that and I don't mind them. I'm kind of like that too. So maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Lana, thank you. And um, I really appreciate you. And I cannot wait until I am on the stage again, doing a side-by-side -side with the Symphoria Youth Orchestras. And um, for all of you who are listening, please encourage your kids to send in their audition tapes, tapes, it's like we're in 1980, send in your audition recordings and uh, register and make sure you get, um, get all of that in. And when's the deadline for that? July 13th. July 13th. So we've got just under a month to get it practiced up and ready to go. So Lana, thanks so much. And for all of you watching, thanks for watching and make sure you join us back here on Monday at, what time do we do Mondays? 3.30, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Have a great weekend, everyone.